Santana. Touchdown. Depot with a slot. It's a lion zone. Give me everything you got. Defense. Hit him with that Cosa. Nostra. Quan Alexander. This dance. Big Cosa. 49er Empire. 49er Empire. This is for the fan base. Die hard. Set by. Stand up. Vote nine to the heart. K.E. Pull on back in candlestick part. Uh-huh. You know, people try to think that greatness is just so complicated, but in actuality, it's so simple. You just got to pay attention to the details of what you're doing. You know, if you don't pay attention to the details, then you're going to feel like you got to do extraordinary things every time. Um, and then that's when people get frustrated. Now you think it's complicated. When in actuality, it takes you know a few minutes here or, or, or a rep here, a play here, to attention to the detail of everything you've done. You know, it takes commitment, finding them details of everything, of every coverage, of every player. You know, those are the type of things that have just instilled in me to make me, you know, realize that you know, I do want to be great. Larry Farrell, as I told you, we got Jared Maiden. I got Rich. I want to appreciate Rich because Rich is the connection. How we got a hold of Jared. Rich, thank you so much. Good to see you here today as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jared, Jared, how you doing today, fam? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Jared. Hanging the, in there. Oh, it's good to hear, Jared. The, 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 Jared, I, I was looking at you. I've been looking at your tapes, man. You play like a feed. You hit hard. You got the... I'm talking Ronnie Lott. We got a whole line of people that you could follow right in the steps. The word steal is being applied to your name already. <laughs> You do mm-hmm. right. I said I didn't know what was up. I looked at it, but everybody's like, "Steal, Jared Maine is all right." Jared, your feelings though about the draft? Um, you no, know, my feelings is it didn't go the way it didn't go the way I expected it. Um, nobody in my family, a lot of people in the Alabama organization, they all thought, you know, I was a you know for sure a draft pick. Even talking to you know, the coaches, the different organizations throughout the whole the whole draft process, you know, they telling me, um, you know, I doubt you become a free agent. You know, I, I'm pretty sure you will, you'll get drafted. Um, teams told me they'll take draft, would have drafted me in the fourth round. Mm. Uh, some as early as the third, um, fifth. So, you know, those are what what I was expecting anywhere from the third to the to the sixth or the fifth that uh you know for sure at least in the fifth but mm. um, you know it didn't work out like that you know it was disappointing it hurt mm. um, it was a little embarrassing you know you have all your family you know your friends you done told them all lined up and ready yeah ready to go ready yeah, to go so you know, I mean you, it hurt yeah I imagine so you know this gives us an insight for those of us aren't involved uh, in this particular procedure, it gives us an insight as to what goes on with players. You had coaches and people talk to you in this fashion, so you're all anticipating everything to happen like it should. And uh, mm-hmm. and then, as you say, Jerry, you, are you gonna be playing with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder this year, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, it hurt. I mean, you know, when all those teams, all them people, they trying to, when they tell you one thing, but then, you know, the last pick of the seventh round is being called and you know, his team's calling your phone, trying to be, trying to get you to come and become a free agent. Mm. So, you know, you know it, it definitely takes a toll. So, you know, I'm going to go, you know, I'm always remember the feeling. So I'm going to play with that feeling. Ah, the fire is going to be there. Yeah. In fact, touch upon that a little bit too. What was your feeling as teams, I already you, you go through that roller coaster of your emotions shooting down like that, and all of a sudden you're getting all these phone calls immediately after the draft ends. What was that like for you, though? Where did that take you? Uh, it was tough. Um, uh, like I said, you know, my name's not getting called. Um, it's about like 10 picks left in the seventh round, and it's, you know, this this team calling me, that team calling me, that team calling me, but... In, but you know, I got a lot of emotion going on. Um, mm. I remember one team had called me, and they was like, "How you doing?" And I, you know, I'm emotional. You know, I'm mad. I'm emotional. Mm. So they trying to ask me um, about what's going on with my the free agent. You know, they want to bring me in. I remember I told um, one of the coaches, I said, "You know, I really can't wrap my head around this right now. Like, you want me to come and make a commitment to you? Like, I right now my mind isn't isn't anywhere near." being able to make a, 
a wise decision, not just a decision made so. But the emotion of how I feel right now. Good for you because the thing is, you chose the 49ers. Jared, what made you choose the 49ers? You could have went any number of places as, as you're telling me right now, or telling us right now that there was there was several phone calls. What made you choose the Niners? Um, ultimately, you know, uh, and I was thinking about it and, you know, so far from, you know, the veteran guys that's there to be able to learn, um, you know, I feel like it's a good opportunity for me to be able to, you know, get on the field, um, special teams wise and or um, learning the playbook and, you know, get on the field at safety or whatever position that they want me to play. Mm, I'm out there. But here's the magic words. Yeah. But ultimately, like, you know, when I came out of high school, I chose to go to, you know, Alabama. Um, you know, one of the things about me is, you know, I could have went to a lot of different places out of college. The same thing with the free agent deal. But you, I always don't want to fall. Fall. If I'm going to fall short, I want to fall short of being great. Like, there's a standard for greatness. Mm. Like, at, at Alabama, there's a, a standard for greatness. You know, there's, there's procedures, there's instruction, there's details to be great. And, you know, some of the places that called me that there's not no structure, it wasn't no detail. Um, you know, some of the places had won Super Bowls, but it was a it was a spot. It was like a one or it was a two, you know, something where it was real spotty. It was no consistency in how the organization would work or how it was ran. So San Fran, to me, you got the dynasty of San Fran. You got them going to the playoffs just now. I mean, it makes it, just, it was just a no-brainer. You know, if I'm a, if I want to be a, a great NFL player and be challenged the way I want to be challenged, I need to go to San Fran. There you the go. That they gave me. See, you can see right now, Jared has standards, and when you chose Bama, you chose tradition, and now you're choosing San Francisco. Jared, you're still in the same road. Tradition. Yeah, We're always. talking five times Super Bowl champs in the organization. Now, you probably know a lot about watching Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, and Robert Sala. Uh, these guys are first rate. These are football guys. And so mm -hmm. when they came in, they came with the program and structure and everything else. They know just where they're going. Brilliant move, fam. Brilliant move. In mm -hmm. fact, you know what's going on in San Francisco. You know about the locker room and all that stuff like that. Your teammates are waiting for you. You, uh, what do you uh, expect to? Uh, you know, you bring in. You're gonna come right in and mesh right in. You're gonna add to uh, everything that's going on because everybody's got everybody's back in San Francisco. Actually, mm -hmm. you probably noticed last year, Keller Witherspoon. He had he had he had struggled, and we and, and Emmanuel Mosley came in and, and took over for him. Akello goes over and tells the coaches, coach. Let me handle special teams. He don't put too much on his plate. He's got it left to do in coverage right now. Let me take over special teams so he can get a break. I have never, even when I play, I have never seen that kind of an attitude on a football team. I think you're going to enjoy it. What do you think about that? And what do you what do you hope to add to it? Uh, you know, for somebody to come come and be like, you know, I want I'll take over the responsibility of the special team. That just shows how dedicated each player is to winning. Because it's easy to be selfish and say, you know what, man, you know, I don't need to be on special teams. You know, that's his job. You know, those are the things that he does. You know, I don't care how much he has on his plate. I got to do my, but actually, you know, getting out of yourself and getting into the team, the selfishness of everybody buying in for the good of the organization, which ultimately is winning. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're getting there with a group of guys that, um, you know, they don't care if you first round, second round, undra undrafted, 11 year vet, two years in, you know, yes. everybody can, if everybody can get out of themselves and, and get towards trying to move forward as an organization, you know, that's something that you want to come and be a part of. And, you know, my time at Alabama, you know, that was something I had to do. I didn't always just start, you know, it took me to my senior year to start. But I did other things. Um, sophomore year, um, try to help Ronnie Harrison. I mean, uh, he was my roommate, and I'm trying to help him. Um, I'm asking him questions on install stuff. He helping me. I'm helping him. What did I see during the week? So, you know, even if I come in and I'm not where I want to be, well, 
if I can help somebody along the way, whether it's a rookie or a vet, you know, if they can help me, you know, that's something I want to be a part of. Mm. And Jared, with your answer on that, I, I don't know. The question is, as the Niner faithful, what can we expect from you? But I kind of think you underlined it right there. You're a man who's committed. Am I right on that? Mm-hmm. I'm just committed to committed to greatness. It is is you know people try to think that greatness is just so complicated, but in actuality, it's so simple. Mm-hmm. You just got to pay attention to the details of what you're doing. You know, if you don't pay attention to the details, then you're gonna feel like you got to do extraordinary things every time. Um, and then that's when people get frustrated. Now you think it's complicated. When actuality, it takes you know a few minutes here or. or or a rep here, a play here, to attention to the detail of everything you've done. You know, it takes commitment, finding the details of everything, of every coverage, of every player. You know, those are the type of things that have just instilled in me to make me, you know, realize that you know, I do want to be great. I believe you'll get there too. And in fact, the COVID-19 situation has, has, has taken you to a place where... You, you, tell us about the, the raw power training program uh, for you and others. This, this is like something... Yeah, go, go ahead, take, elaborate on that. So the raw power team, uh, Damon Patterson, his dad, his brother, you know, they all... They actually had trained me, um, I think starting about my junior, sophomore year of high school, um, you know, they always push me to, to do um, the best I could. So, you know, now that, you know, the COVID-19 stuff has happened, uh, it was just nothing for me to pick up the phone and call them back. And they said, you know, we're going to do everything we can to get you ready for camp. Uh, the situation that I'm coming in in, I can't come in out of shape. I can't come in missing mm. beat. You know, I need to come in ready to compete for a job. I can't take any steps back, you know. So they made it real easy for me to, you know, pick back up and not be out here slacking or, you know, just trying to do home workouts, actually getting me ready for the next level. I believe he's going to be ready. Rich, I think he's going to be ready. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, <laughs> man. You know, I was I was upset about, you know, not hearing his name in the draft. But you know what? After everything's said and done, Jared, and you come out of that tunnel mm-hmm. and they say from the University of Alabama. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jared That's gonna make it Maiden. all to Jared Maiden. And Jared. you're gonna hear the roar of the crowd and you're gonna hear the empire out there. It's Jared. nothing like it. Nothing like it. Oh man. Hey, hey, hey Jared, you know you, who you everybody's gonna ask you this over and over again. But who inspired you down through the years when you first started playing ball? What made you start playing ball? And who are some of the names along the way that made you into Jared Maiden? Who who set that fire to make you who you are? Uh, I want to say he probably said it was probably my my, my grandfather. Um, mm-hmm. He was big on all his all his um, you know grandchildren on playing sports. So I remember um, just being like six, seven. You know, he would be like, "Man, if you score, it would never score one touchdown. It was always if you can score two touchdowns, the ice cream man. I'll get you something from the ice cream man. If you can score." Three touchdowns, you can get you an ice cream and a soda, you know, something like that. So he always, you know, one touchdown to him was just average. Like anybody can go get one touchdown. They can throw a tackle, one touchdown, you know, I mean, a fullback, one touchdown. But can you do something that a lot of people don't see? Two touchdowns in a game, three touchdowns, touchdown pick, interception. Mm. Like, Mm. you know, he was the one who first started that fire of being more than exceptional. See that? That's the thing. Any any aspiring grandpops, actually anybody that's about to be a pops, you got to make sure to motivate any child in whatever they want to do. Let them know you're right behind them because they they shadow that. I had an uncle like that. He used to tease me whenever I would lose at a track meet, whenever I would play at ball. If I ever got smoked, I was a defense back as well. If I ever got smoked, he'd be the loudest one in the stands laughing. Yeah, no, I told you about that. I told you about that. You know, oh. and you're like when you're in junior high school, high school, you know, it means a lot to you that you impress, mm-hmm. right? And then, and then, of course, you get to the next level, and now it's all about you and how you want to achieve. And Jared, I think you've done that. In fact, Jared, uh, I'm looking at the tapes yesterday. We just watched Jawan Jennings 
get drafted to the 49ers, and you mm-hmm. took Jawan's clothes off. Oh, and then, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. I was looking at the tape. Ain't that Jawan? Oh, it, yeah. Jared C. Nibob. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that, he, 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 I, don't, I, don't, I don't want you to embarrass Jawan because, you know, it's all in the heat of battle. But, Jared, I'm a. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, whoa, look at this. And Jennings is a good ball player. And you took mm-hmm. him down. Yeah, just speak a little bit on that. You know, you, you know, I mean, just if you want to. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's a great, he's a great, I mean, I, I got the um, chance to play with him on my team at the Senior Bowl. Mm. So I got a chance to really interact with him a little bit more than just, you know, being competitive. But, you know, he competes hard. I mean, yeah. he, he, he is a competitor. He's going to block. He's going to do all the things that, you know, outside of him getting the ball, he'll do everything it takes for the, you know, the offense to be successful. Um, I mean, just that game, though, we had a good game plan. Um, mm. You know, I went into some of the details. of um, That game was big on um, ball security with with their receivers. So, um, so you know, a couple of times I was, be, I was able to, you know, see the ball and um, punch it out or take a shot at it. Mm. But, and you was know, in position I to make mean, an INT. I said, mm-hmm. I said, look at yeah. Jared. I said, oh no, you see the greed all over. Jared, <laughs> yeah. He's on that, he is greedy. But Jared, you yeah, know what? Buddy. Yeah, you, you speak highly of Jawad. Yeah, that speaks volumes for you too, because as he, exactly. you're right, he is a good ball player, and you, 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 you was the antidote. I, well, I was impressed. So we're gonna see you guys. Hopefully, you, you shortly. I, you know, also I want to ask you about moms too. CEO, founder. A mama made and speaks at MMS Global Fitness Athletic Consultant. Mama's just, you got all kind of folks around you. Inspirational speaker. You got your grandfather. You got moms. How could you possibly be anything but spectacular? Don't forget, mm-hmm. he got number one fan, Vader, right here, baby. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> right Talk here. Every day. All day, every yeah. day. You know, that support, man, it's hard. You know, it's hard. It's hard. It would have to be, uh, you know, with all the, with all the with everybody I got surrounding me, you know, that just goes to show um, they're pushing me to become what I what I believe I can become. So, you know, they're gonna keep on pushing me and pushing me to help me get to the heights that I want to accomplish. So I can't surround myself with mediocre, you know, average people who got mm. average minds because I'm just gonna be average player in the league, and those players don't last. So, you know, I had to surround myself with greater people. Mm. Shout out to Mama Maiden. Hey, hey, Jared. By the way, do you play both free safety and strong safety? As you mentioned earlier, you you can uh, you'll you'll go anywhere uh, the coaches ask you to go. Mm-hmm. I do not want to see you at corner. I'm gonna put that out there right now because a lot of times what? corners. No, they people. What? No, no way. I would say this because the coaches they bring people in and they start moving them out of the spot that they were spectacular in. I know Jared can handle the corner, but I want him at safety whether it be free safety or strong safety, so I know he's going to kick butt. Uh, Jared, am I, am I speaking any truth on that? Or what, do you, what do you think? I mean, me personally, I feel like I can be spectacular at any, any position, even at corner. Uh, uh, I feel like, uh, you know, I did ball this year at safety, but it was because uh, I was able to be that type of safety who, you know, I did oh, come up and hit, but it was my coverage. It was my coverage ability right. at the end of the day when Coach Saban brought me in his office and said, you know, Jared, um, I think about sophomore year, he said, Jared, you know, you can play safety. Uh, I always played slot corner uh, all my years there, ah. all four. Mm-hmm. So he was like, he said, um, he said, you know, you can be a good outside corner. He said, you can, you can play, you can go to the NFL, you'll just be like a, a good corner. Or... He said, oh, I can move you to safety. And if you can learn how to um, do the run fit, learn how to tackle, um, controlled aggression, and learn the details of playing safety, he said, you'll be a spectacular safety in the NFL. You'll be, you'll be a great safety in the NFL. There you go. So, and, and, it you know, sounds like, and it sounds like you, diversity is, is your game. If you've already played slot and every place else, because see, we don't, I don't, they're showing that on the tape. They're showing you Jared Maiden, the spectacular safety. But now, from what you're saying, yeah, you, 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 because you know, we, that's, that's going to work out mm-hmm. real well. All right, because you got versatility. All right, all right. 
Mm. All right, fam. I'll tell you what, hey, let's go ahead and get you, let you go and catch up with the family, get something to eat. Jared, I appreciate you, you fam. Jared. Thank you, Jared. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. And Tom Mamo, I love her. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, uh, setting this up and, uh, and, and 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 again, brother, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Empire, man. I'm so happy they picked you up. I didn't like, you know, again, my feelings is I would like to hear your name in the draft also, but better yet, I can't wait to hear your name coming out of the tunnel, baby. Appreciate and- it. I can't wait to come out the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, it's that point I was talking about. I'm going to count it down to three, two, one. Jared, are you ready for the holler? Three. Yeah. Dude, you can do it, Jared. See, we're going to bring the crazy out of Jared right now. Let him go. Come on, Jared. <laughs> Three, two, one. It's Niners. Let's go. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Rumble, Rumble. Let me let, let, let me let me let me let me go ahead and uh, yeah, oh, here, okay. I finish my phone. Because Rich be doing it, boy. Hey, Rich, go ahead, man. Okay. Three, two. This is what we do it on the red and gold, baby. <laughs> <laughs> look out, Jared. Look out. Three, two, one. Let me go! I'm ready to go! Radio Rumble Sports. That's how we do it right here. We love you, and we can't wait to see you, Jared. Love you. Thank you. Thank you for for, for being on the show, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. Jared, my, my feelings exactly. Thanks, Jared. Looking forward you know to watching you in the days ahead. I you know, always it. love you, Rumble. Thanks, fam. <laughs>